As a plane flies, it uses aviation electronics to navigate safely to its destination. But how does a pilot know that the equipment will work when it's rainy or cold? That's where I come in. Hi, my name is Martha Garcia Wegener and I'm a mechanical engineer in the Environmental Effects Engineering Lab. I make sure that the equipment that the pilot uses to fly planes will work under tough environmental conditions. I'm a mechanical engineer in the Environmental Effects Engineering Lab for a company that designs equipment for planes, such as displays and control panels. A designer designs equipment according to the customer's requirements, and many times that equipment needs to go on planes that are expensive or that people are on. Therefore, it needs to work right every time. We test the equipment to make sure it will work correctly when it's in the air, and we want to make sure the plane will make it to its destination safely. My role is to oversee the testing on those displays and control panels as it comes through the environmental lab. Environmental testing means that we put it through the conditions that it'll see in its lifetime, such as temperature, altitude, and humidity. I write the test reports and test procedures for the projects that come through our lab, as well as manage their testing schedules. If the equipment fails under these conditions, then I'm also involved with the troubleshooting. Environmental testing is divided into two different types climatic and dynamic. Climatic tests are designed to simulate the climates that the equipment will be exposed to, such as hot, cold, rainy, humid, and even dusty environments. Dynamic tests are designed to simulate the forces of motion that the equipment will experience, such as acceleration, vibration, crashes, and shocks. In order to understand what conditions the equipment in a plane is exposed to, I first had to understand things such as physics, weather, and the atmosphere. As a student, I really enjoyed my math and physics classes because they both involved tough math problems, and when I tackled those, they gave me a good sense of accomplishment. Plus, it really made me proud to design the winning egg drop device in my physics class. In college, I learned that engineers make lots of things that help people in their everyday lives. Mechanical engineers are responsible for the engines in our cars, the compressors that run our air conditioners, and even the pacemakers that help keep people's hearts pumping. Being a mechanical engineer is not required for my job. However, by understanding these forces that act on the products, I can help the designers troubleshoot problems with their equipment. Certain things happen as a plane flies up into the air. If you've ever climbed a mountain, you know that as you get higher, it gets colder and your ears start to pop. This is because things change in the atmosphere as you get higher in altitude. Three things change as you increase the altitude, pressure, temperature, and humidity. These changes can sometimes cause the equipment to fail and we don't want that to happen. So what we do here is we test the equipment. One of the tests that we conduct here is a temperature altitude test, and it simulates planes flying at high altitudes. What we have here is a display that's going to go in the cockpit of a big jumbo jet. To understand why pressure decreases as you increase in altitude, think about this. Have you ever swam to the bottom of a lake or a swimming pool? Well, as you go down, do you remember feeling like there's more pressure on you? Well, that's because the deeper you go, the more water is on top of you. So therefore, more pressure. As you go up, there's less pressure because there's less water on top of you. Air pressure works the same way. You might not think about it, but air has weight and it is pushing down on us all the time. The higher you go up in altitude, the less air there is. Therefore, the less pressure there is. You might think that temperature also increases as you increase in altitude because you are getting closer to the sun. That's a good guess, but actually temperature decreases as you increase in altitude because it is also related to the air pressure. Remember, as you increase the altitude, there's less air. Therefore, there are less air molecules to hold the heat and the temperature decreases because of that. 
The decrease in temperature and pressure as you increase the altitude in a plane can cause the equipment in it to function differently than it would on the ground. During the temperature altitude test, we decrease the temperature in the chamber by using the cooling system, and we also decrease the pressure by using a high power vacuum. This test is important because we need to ensure that the materials don't become brittle at cold temperatures. We also check to make sure that gaskets that seal the units don't expand with the change in pressure. If they do expand and then shrink, they could allow moisture to enter the equipment during the humidity test and cause the electronics to stop working. To perform the tests that ensure our equipment functions correctly, I have to understand how temperature, pressure, and other factors affect its materials. You can also run experiments at home to see how temperature change affects materials. Get a balloon and a tape measure and blow it up. Then measure the balloon circumference. That's the length around the outside of the balloon. What do you think will happen to the balloon if you change the temperature of the air inside of the balloon? Write down your hypothesis. Now put the balloon in the freezer for a few minutes. What do you think will happen to the balloon while it's in the freezer? Take it out and look at it and measure it. Has it changed? Now try running the balloon under warm water. What happens now? Try and explain any changes you see. This type of experimenting can help you understand how physics, science, and engineering works in the world around you.